Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be doing part 2 of the new series that I've started which is all about answering frequently asked questions by beginners. And today we're going to be talking about tool related questions. So we're going to dive right in with the first question which is which tools should I get as a beginner? And there are actually three tools that you're going to want to get when you're starting out with this craft. Those are wire cutters or flush cutters, flat nose pliers or nylon nose pliers, and round nose pliers or needle nose pliers. Depending on where you're from, they could also be called something else. So I'm going to be inserting some photos to clarify what I mean. And there are no specific requirements for these tools. So the things that are important is that they lay nicely in your hands. You're going to be working with these a lot. So you want them to sit nicely in your hands, comfortable to grip. They, don't, they shouldn't take too much strength for you to use them. Um, and it's also important to make sure that the ends of the pliers are nice and narrow or small to reach difficult to reach places. And the one, the most important thing is that these pliers are not textured. So you can get, for example, uh, flat nose pliers, which have sort of a ribbed edge in, on the inside of the, uh, of the ends of the pliers. And that will definitely make sure you're going to leave marks on your wire. So you don't want that. So you want to get nice and flat, non-textured pliers. And then the second question I see a lot is, do I need, and then you can insert any tool that you can think of, to get started on wire wrapping or wire weaving? And the answer is no. You don't need to get any other tools than the three that I mentioned in the previous question to start on this craft. Of course, there are some things which will make the process easier, um, and there are tools which some people prefer getting, but to start the out in this craft, you don't need to get anything other than the three, three tools that I just mentioned. Some other things that you probably already have laying around the house which will make the process easier are a ruler, some sort of small rod or round thing to form your bales on, a nail file to maybe file out some of the marks that you leave on the wire and a sharpie or a marker to mark things on the wire which you can later remove again. And then the next question is what brand is the best to get? And this is a little bit dependent on what is available to you and the way you handle your tools. So this is person specific. I can't just tell you the brand that I'm using and make sure that it's something that you're also going to be comfortable with. So this is something that you're going to want to figure out uh, along the way. But to be honest, the best brand you can get is not necessarily brand related. So um, you'll figure out later on in this video what I mean. It's not necessarily a brand that's going to set you up. Um, it's a specific type of tools and we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. So I'm not going to give you guys any brands, it's fully dependent on what you're able to find near you. Um, maybe you can search online a little bit to see what's out there. Um, but I'd really recommend getting tools where you can handle them first before you buy them. Because as I said, it's very important that these tools are laying nicely in your hands and you, you feel comfor comfortable using them. So just ordering them online might not be the best way to get some proper tools for yourself. And then the next question that I see is, some people actually have two sets of tools. Is this necessary and why do they have two sets of tools? Well, the reason that people sometimes have two sets of tools is because they prefer one set for smaller gauges of wire and one set for bigger gauges of wire. And they do this because it is supposed to make the tools last longer. So I don't personally think that this is necessary at all. You can fully do this craft with only one set of tools, again, taking into account something that we're going to be discussing later. So no, it is not necessary to have two sets of tools to start on this craft. And even if you get further along and you go from being a beginner to someone that's intermediate or even someone that's fully mastered this craft, it's not something that is necessary. And now we get to one of the most important questions, which is, where should I buy my tools? And there are always two types of people in this craft. There are the people that use tools that are specifically meant for jewelry making. And there are the people that use tools that are not meant for jewelry making. And what I mean by that is, 
I am one of the people that don't use jewelry making tools. Uh, I use tools that are meant to be used by electricians. So I personally prefer that because I've had jewelry making tools and they all broke, they all started rusting, they all didn't work as well as they should because jewelry making tools aren't meant to stand up to the abuse that we put them through in this craft. So they're more of a universal tool, which can be used in a lot of different crafts. And especially if you're working with a couple of thicker gauges, and when I say thicker, I mean anything that's above 18 gauge. So that's not even necessarily that thick in our craft, right? So your jewelry making tools are gonna sort of start falling apart. Um, and it might take a while, some people can make them last very long, but I just personally find it a bit ridiculous to invest my money in a set of jewelry making tools for them to last maybe a year or two years, and then they break down and then I have to invest again. While if I get tools from the hardware store, which are actually meant for electricians, those tools will last me a lifetime. Especially if you take good care of them and make sure that they're not put in like damp spots or stuff that will make them rust. Because electrician's tools will also rust if they're exposed to moisture. Um, so you have to take a little bit of care of them, but that's what the same with jewelry making tools. So electrician's tools or tools you can get from the hardware store will last you so much longer than jewelry making tools. And they're able to take a lot more abuse than the jewelry making tools. So that's also where I get my tools from. I get them from the hardware store. I make sure that they're, as I said before, easy to hold, comfortable for me to grip. And I also make sure that they're the smallest ones that I can get. So generally speaking, when you're getting electrician tools, they'll say a number. So the thickness of gauge that they're able to cut through. Um, and you want to make sure that you get one that corresponds with the gauges that you're working with. So that might mean that you're not going to get the smallest tool. Maybe you're going to go one size up or two sizes up, depending on what what wire gauges you're using. But for me, I only really use 18, 20 and 26 gauge. And I'm able to use the smallest um, plier from the brand that I use to do or do to cut all of those wires. So I personally, I've invested in them. They're not too expensive they're about as expensive as jewelry making tools really um so i think for the three that i have currently you'd spend about 15 bucks 15 to 20 bucks depending on what brand you're getting per plier so i've had the luxury that in my home we already had a couple of these and i've just been using them um and they're serving me fine but if you're going to invest in new ones which i personally do recommend because if they're new there's not going to be any rust or marks or scratches on them yet uh, which is what you want you want them to be as uh, texture free as possible so if you're going to invest in a new set of tools please get yourself some electrician tools and not jewelry making tools they'll last you a lot longer and it will make sure that you're not going to run into a couple of problems which we're going to be discussing uh, after this so that's where you should buy your tools go your get yourself to the hardware store go to the electrician section and get yourself pliers that are easy to hold for you that don't take too much strength to use that are nice and small so you can get into those places that are difficult to reach um, and they'll last you a lot longer then the next question is my pliers keep leaving marks on the wire what am i doing wrong and the first thing you should ask yourself is, are you using pliers with or without texture? So as I mentioned before, if you're using textured pliers, you're going to be leaving marks on the wire. It doesn't even matter if you're using a minimal amount of strength or pressure, you're going to be leaving marks. I actually started out using flat nose pliers, which were textured and I managed, but it's making it a lot more difficult to get that clean finish. So I really wouldn't recommend that. Um, so that's the first thing you need to look at. Are you using pliers with or without texture? If you're using pliers without texture, then you're probably putting too much pressure on the wire. So I know it can be a little bit scary if you're holding something with these very thin pliers 
you're going to want to apply a lot of pressure, right? Because you think that's the only way to grip the wire. But that's really not necessary. These tools are made to be gripping the wire. So you only have to put minimal pressure on them, lightly grip the wire with the tools rather than having a death grip, and that will already make you able to work on the wires. Now, if this continues after you figure out, okay, maybe I'm putting too much pressure on the wire, I'm going to try and not do that. But if that still continues, then you might want to look into getting nylon nose pliers or pliers which have sort of a protective cover um, at the end of the tools to make sure that there are no marks left on the wire. If that's not something you have available to you, then there are also chemicals to actually put over the pliers to protect the wire. It's sort of like a latex type layer, so it's not toxic at all. Um, but you put that over the pliers and those will, that will also help protect the wire. And one of the most popular ones is actually Tool Magic. So Tool Magic is a sort of latex-like substance which you put over the ends of your pliers and if you get to work on the wire it won't leave as many marks. You do have to replace that every once in a while because it does wear off. But that might be a nice thing if you're starting out and you're having trouble with this. Then the next question is actually again regarding to the type of pliers that you have. So my pliers have broken. What am I doing wrong? And I've personally never had pliers break. So I can't exactly answer this from experience. But again, I think the problem mostly lays when I see this around in the type of pliers that you're using. I see this a lot with people that use jewelry making pliers. So again, as I mentioned, those aren't made specifically for cutting the types of metal that we're working with. They aren't meant to withstand the abuse that it crafts, this craft puts them through. So if they break, then I'm really sorry for you and I hope that you're still able to work on the craft even if you don't have that specific tool. If not, then you're going to want to invest in some electrician pliers. Again, just get yourself those electrician's pliers. They're so much stronger than jewelry making pliers. And also, of course, again, try to put a little bit of pressure on your pliers. Don't have a death grip. Um, those are some of the things you can do to hopefully prevent this from happening in the future. And if this happens, after just a few days or weeks of you having bought those pliers, even if they're jewelry making pliers, make sure you get in contact with the company where you bought them, get a refund, um, because they're not meant to break after a couple of days or a couple of weeks, even if they're jewelry making pliers. So there might just have been a manufacturing fault in them. Um, but still, I'd recommend getting electrician's pliers over jewelry making pliers. Then the next question is, what are some non-essential tools which help me make uh, some techniques easier? So as I mentioned before, there are quite a few tools that you can use for this craft. And there are only three that are essential, the first three that I mentioned. But there are a lot of tools that will help make certain techniques easier. So the first one is a bale making plier. So a bale making plier is specifically meant to help you form bales. And both of the sort of endings have different sizes where you can form your bales, depending on the size of pendant or thing you're going to make. So it's not a tool that I personally have, but it is a tool that I see around a lot, and I imagine that it can make making bales a lot easier. So the next one is a ring mandrel, which is especially useful if you're going to be making rings, and especially if you're going to be making rings and selling them. Because, of course, you're supposed to be making specific sizes if you're going to be selling your rings. Um, and a ring mandrel will just help you get that perfect size. There are other ways to make rings. For example, if you know approximately what your own size is and you can find something that's round shaped in your house, which has the same size, you can easily make a ring around that. But if you're going to start making rings for other people or in a lot of different sizes, then it's some, the ring mandrel is something you're going to want to invest in. The same can be said for bracelet mandrels. So I, again, personally don't use this. I do use a ring mandrel, but I don't use a bracelet mandrel. So bracelet mandrels are kind of the same as a ring mandrel, except for, you know, bracelets. Um, they help you form the bracelet in a specific size and in a specific shape. Um, it's something that you're 
maybe want to be investing in if you're making a lot of bracelets. I personally don't make a lot of bracelets, so I haven't invested in this, but it is something that I might want to get in the future. And then the next thing is soldering. So soldering is a whole different skill set that is also used in this craft. And it's not really something that beginners do, but once you go from being a beginner to maybe someone that's intermediate or, or already pretty much mastering this craft, soldering might be something that you're going to stumble into and you're going to want to get started on that. Um, and most people have a soldering iron laying around their house, but that's definitely not something that you're going to want to use if you want to start making jewelry. So if you're going to want to start soldering and making jewelry with that, the thing you want to get is a butane torch. It can just be like a small one. It doesn't need to be one of those really big um, soldering things which cost you a lot, which also holds like a lot of butane in the tank and stuff. Just a small, simple uh, butane torch will get you started. And I actually, I do have a small one, which I think cost me about 10 bucks. And you can actually fill that with lighter fluid, which is also butane. And then it takes about... I think half an hour before it runs out. So that helps me get through one or two projects before I need to start filling that up again. So those are some non-essential tools which will definitely help make some techniques easier. And then the next question is, are there any tools you find unnecessary? So this is a question I get asked a lot uh, through my Facebook because there are a lot of tools out there and there are a lot of more tools out there that are more expensive. So are there any tools I find unnecessary? Yes. Um, for example, tumblers, a Dremel, um, those things I find unnecessary. I don't use them personally. I do have a Dremel and I've used that a little bit for polishing the wire, but I just prefer getting the polishing done with some extra fine steel wool which is something that I'm also going to be talking about a little bit more once I get through the video that is focused on oxidizing the wire. So a Dremel, if you have it laying around, of course you can use it, um, but it's not something that I'd recommend investing in. It's, it's, it's um, something that's going to cost you a little bit of money that really you don't have to spend. You don't have to use a Dremel. There's, there are other things you can use to do the things that you might want to do with the Dremel, which I personally find faster and actually a little bit better even. And then for a tumbler, tumblers are generally used, as I um, have been informed, to either harden the wire, polish any stones or polish any wire after it's been oxidized. And I personally just don't see the use in them. Um, my wire, I use dead soft wire, so it hardens while I work with it. And I've never had trouble with the wire being too soft to work with or a finished piece being so soft that some of the decorations would be pulled out of place or something with a little bit of movement. I think if you're mastering this craft and you're able to work out the endings of your wire in a neat way, so tuck them in, making sure that nothing catches on the ends, then it's not really necessary to tumble your pieces. It is necessary if you're going to be wanting to start making your own cabochons, tumbling your own stones, then of course you want to invest in a tumbler. But it's not something you need if you're going to be working with ready-made stones and just wire wrapping or wire weaving them. So tumblers is something that I, I don't think are worth the money. Um, though I'm sure there are people out there that will tell you otherwise, and I don't personally have experience with working with a tumbler, so perhaps my opinion is a little bit biased. But I just think, especially as a beginner, this is not something you're going to want to spend your money on. Spend that money on getting, for example, proper storage to store your wire and your stones and everything else to protect those. Spend that money on getting yourself some wire to practice with, some nice stones to work with, um, but no, a tumbler is not something that you're going to want to invest in as you, as a beginner. And then the last question is somewhat related to this. And that is, are there, is there some kind of clamp to hold my wires? And the answer is yes, there are clamps available, um, on the market to hold wire. Not, they're not specifically made to hold wire, but they will do the job. 
And you can also make one yourself quite easily. There are some tutorials online as well in some of the Facebook groups that I'm in. But, and here's the big but, I personally don't recommend this for beginners. Now, there is an exception because there are medical reasons for people not to be able to grip the wire correctly. Either because they don't have the strength in their fingers or they, they start experiencing pain when they're holding the wire tightly. So for those people, it's definitely something that you might want to look into. So clamps are available and they might help soothe that pain. They might help you get into this craft if you are unable to grip the wire. So that's something that's wonderful, right? Because this craft is for everyone. Even if you have, for example, arthritis and you're not able to really grab, grip, grip the wire as you should, then clamps are something that will make you help get started in this craft. But if you don't have a medical reason for you not to be able to hold the wires correctly, I feel that it's better to spend some time on learning how to properly do this than to use a tool to make this easier. And why do I say this? Well, holding the wire is basically the most important thing in this craft. It's the way that you're going to put tension on the wire. It's the way you're going to manipulate the wire. You're going to have so much more control when holding the wires yourself. So it doesn't mean that if you use a clamp that you're not going to be able to do this craft, as I mentioned before. But it does also add some difficulty to manipulating the wire, to, the wire, to bending some wire. Um, so really, if there is no medical reason or for you, and medical reason is a very broad spectrum, right? So if there's no medical reason for you, to not be able to hold the wires properly, please just take some time, spend a, spend an afternoon just holding the wires, doing some practicing weaves uh, and getting to know the grip on the wires and the way you need to move your fingers to manipulate the wire. And this will really help you in the long run once you start doing some more complicated stuff for you to have better control over the wires. So that was actually the questions that I had for today. Um, and I hope that the, I've been able to answer some questions related to tools and that you are now able to get a ben better understanding of which tools you should get as a beginner and which tools you might want to invest in later on. If this video has been helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could maybe give it a like or leave a comment. You might even want to subscribe if you enjoy this type of video because I'm going to be continuing this series with even more questions that I'm going to be answering. If you'd like to further support me, you can check out my social media, which I've left in the description. Among them are my Instagram and my Etsy as well. I'm selling some simple tutorials there as well as the jewelry that I make. But of course, none of these things are necessary for you to enjoy these videos. Um, and I hope that you will have a very nice day and I'll see you all in the next video.